six how are you guys doing i hope you all are doing good fine and taking care of yourselves and uh, happy so today we are on ssc instead of wasting time we will directly go to ssc the last chapter uh, we did the rural livelihoods now it is the urban livelihoods so i'm going to just give you a brief explanation and if we have time i'll read it for you or you read it yourself and you have to answer the questions and get all the homeworks ready sst is complete your full book is complete you have to get all the question answers ready after your <coughs> first term whatever happened so urban livelihoods basically vendors and government measures what are vendors and government measures there are some shops on the pavement vendors sell things prepared at home like snacks food or uh, uh, street vending is an obstruction to traffic the government has introduced measures to reduce number of vendors hawking zones have been suggested for towns and cities you know you have a place for where hawkers and vendors can sit and sell if they sit and sell on the road you know that's a problem you know you have jams and all markets in the cities are crowded during the festivals there are different shops selling sweets toys clothes footwear utensils electronic goods everything there are business persons in the urban cities in the cities there are people who own shoes uh, in various markets shops in very harpreet a business woman opened ready made showrooms she uh, buys the materials from different cities of india like mumbai ahmedabad etc and some items even from foreign countries showrooms business persons are not employed but by anyone but they employ a number of workers as supervisors and helpers they get a license from the municipal corporation to open showrooms shops in the marketplace medical clinics are also set up in the marketplace the dental clinic helps people to solve tooth problems next to the dental clinic is a cloth showroom with three floors okay so this is all about then we have the call centers we vendor is a person who sells things daily to uh, daily use by going door to door urban areas are towns and cities business person one who earns his livelihood by engaging himself in some business employer is the one who gives a job to a person casual worker who is one engaged on temporary work labor chok a place where daily laborers gather together with their tools and wait for people to come to hire them for work we have one at uh, agoria bazar chok that all the labor come in the morning and they wait the call centers it's a, gives a new form of employment to the people of big cities it is centralized office that deals with problems and questions that consumers customers have regarding goods purchased and services like banking ticket booking etc etc hawker is a one who sells things by going from place to place asking people to buy them so now we'll just go to the chapter i'll read it out for you so that it will be much more easier so that you understand point by point you have to do the reading and that's your job so what i'm going to do is i'm going to start reading this is all about reading you know if you don't read you won't be able to solve anything there are many towns and big cities in india big cities such as delhi and kolkata have more than a crore people living and working there people in the cities may be rich industrialists or may belong to the middle class which include small businessmen and salary earners <coughs> a large section including factory workers and rickshaw pullers are poor in the city people are engaged in different professions some are employed by others while some are self employed <coughs> workers on the street people who work on the streets work for themselves as i just now said vegetable vendors florists newspaper sellers cobblers roadside barbers people selling goods on carts and rickshaw pullers are not employed by anyone some people set up temporary shops the police can ask them to remove their shops at any time so they have no security vendors are not allowed to go to certain parts of the city they sell eatables and they are that are usually prepared at home by their family members There are approximately one crore street vendors in India working in urban areas. The government is considering relaxing the law that bans street vendors so that their right to earn livelihood is recognized. It has suggested that there should be a special area for them in the cities. They should be allowed to move about in all areas. They should also be allowed to move into all areas. You know, to selling the vendors, people like to eat, you know, snacks and all. If you get something, cycle rickshaw pillar, chagan. I am Chakan. I come from a village in UP where I worked as an agricultural labor. My family lives in the village. We do not own any land in the village. I did not get work regularly due to which I could not meet the needs of my family. So I came to the city. <coughs> in the city, I could not get a job. I made a friend whose name is Anil. We lived 
in a, we live in a rented room anil introduced me to hari prasad who owns many rickshaws i pull a cycle rickshaw that belongs to hari prasad i work from 8 am to 9 pm every month i have to pay rupees 300 as rent for the cycle rickshaw i earn about rupees 100 every day out of which i spend rupees 60 on food and rent each passenger gives me 5 to 10 rupees per trip depending upon the distance i earn less when it rains or when i fall ill i go to my village to see my family twice a year my wife works as an agricultural labor in the village just imagine the life <laughs> this is a local market in the market this is a local market there are many shops selling utensils crockery electronic goods such as tvs refrigerators and music systems also ready made clothes footwear toys there are restaurants fast food joints jewelry shops book shops sweet shops banks courier services and clinics i am sangeeta my sister natasha will be getting married very soon we went to the market to buy few things first we went to the eye specialist where my mother had to get her eyes checked she had an appointment so i did not so it did not take very long from there we went to a crockery shop shopkeepers mandeep and priya mandeep and priya own a crockery shop you know all uh, food i uh, you know glassware crockery cup plate dish all in glass all kinds of crockery are available here the shop also stocks steel utensils there are many shopkeepers in different markets their shops may be big or small some of them own these shops while others are tenants <coughs> most of them are self employed they employ a number of salesmen supervisors and helpers the local bodies in the cities issue licenses to these people to run their businesses one day of the week the market remains closed this day is fixed by the municipal corporation <coughs> businessman sunil next we went to a shop selling garments clothes to different size and colors were available there salwar suits tops trousers frocks for every age group were available the shop was spread over two floors the shopkeeper had employed tailors who worked in the factory area a few kilometers away from the shop sunil is a businessman he goes to the wholesale cloth market to purchase material some of the material comes from surat ahmedabad and mumbai some of the dress materials are obtained from foreign countries buttons lace thread needles are purchased from the wholesale market in delhi sunil runs a boutique he has advertised in newspapers and on television and radio when he started working 15 years ago he was a tenant in the building two years ago he bought his shop with every passing year he earns more money from his business with this profit sunil has been able to build his own house he has also bought a car so a small businessman can also earn money factory workshop area My sister had to meet a friend in an export house, so we decided to go towards the factory area and a few miles away from the market. We first took the metro and then travelled some distance by bus. The metro ride was quite comfortable, but when we got into the bus, we had to push our way through. Most of those travelling with us were factory workers or casual labourers. We got down from the bus when the bus reached the main crossing of the factory area. The crossing was full of casual labourers who were waiting. for people to come and give them work among the laborers we were masons and their helpers those who dig at construction sites lift bricks or unload the trucks dig for pipelines and telephone cables whitewash houses and do carpenter jobs on a daily basis the factory area was full of small and big factories in some factory parts of machines were manufactured while in others they were being assembled we finally reached the export house There was a unit that was putting together shirts for export. There was another unit in the same factory that was stitching garments for women. One set of people were working on sewing machines while other group was stitching buttons on the clothes. Some were embroidering clothes with the help of machines while others were embroidering by hand. In one corner of the factory the clothes had been piled to be packed. Cardboard boxes were lying near them. Many of these factories export garments to countries such as USA, UK, France, Germany, Italy. factory worker santosh santosh works in a garment factory she works from 9 am to 5 pm she works 6 days a week when the factory owner gets large order santosh works overtime she is paid 80 for rupees 80 for 8 hours per day and rupees 20 per hour as overtime so 80 per day 8 3 is a 24 so 2400 per month Plus twenty rupees, whatever she does for an hour. But when the owner does not get an order, she has no work. This happens about two to three months in a year. So Santos works on a casual basis. That is only when the owner of the factory needs her. At times, when there is no work in the factory, she has to look for work elsewhere. Her job is temporary. <coughs> 
casual workers cannot complain i'll come back in the next video